and then not have the delay with the start of construction. Uh, one thing I uh, lost over is with the bond anticipation note, we will also have the ability to, to turn it into, in effect, a, a line of credit. So even though we might close on the loan, and that loan would be about uh, $3.9 million, we would only draw upon that as we need. And that is going to help keep that interest cost as low as possible. So from the analysis that we prepared, um, weighing the, the pros and cons of the two scenarios, we feel pretty comfortable the best scenario for the project uh, is to proceed with a bond anticipation note with the idea of taking that out um, probably at the completion of construction. Are there any questions I'd be happy to answer. Uh, you've effectively, uh, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, we're in a position to move uh, all the processes that need to be taken care of at the local level have been uh, cleared. So we can move forward with this with with the, the actions that you have taken uh, to date. So um, it should be a pretty streamlined process. Uh, the only re action that would remain is the uh, redevelopment authority would actually approve the financing documents uh, for the bank and you know, or bond. We just, tonight, we could just do a moral motion as to our support of the ban
actually sell the bonds about 30 days. Okay. Who determines that threshold? Well, um, it'd, be, it'd be your decision. I mean, we would, we would seek your, uh, we would offer you advice, but it'd be your decision to, to make that decision to transition to long term financing. Um, and what, what, I, what we will invariably seek from where we are today to the next couple of numbers, rates are going to move up and rates are going to move down. You know, if you see the normal sort of activity, we're probably not going to get too nervous about it. There's a dramatic event in the market, you know, or if it becomes apparent that the, the, you know, we're at the start of that upward trend, um, we'll probably uh, push it. But I wouldn't worry about just the day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week fluctuations in the market. It'd be something more dramatic, then you know, we would uh, probably call you and say, let's, let's look about moving in the long term. And um, you know, we could. I don't want to too many of the nuts and bolts in the detail. Once we start the process, it isn't as if the die is cast, you can't stop. Um, and other than the time we set for the determination of locking in the long term rates, um, you're not committed to anything. Else. Okay. So, in the same scenario, if the Dow drops again to 6,500, why well, we will go after the lower interest rates quicker, too, right? Um, theoretically, you could you'd be looking at a point where it makes some sense to lock in. You know, once you lock in, depending on where you are in the construction phase, um, it'll be bit, if the project's 50% done, there's still the possibility of changes in the project cost. So we'll have to build in some contingency to make sure. Um, but yeah, if we see a you know, if we see a real dramatic change to the downside, we may we may be calling and say, well, let's you know, take bird in the hand versus two of the bush type of approach. And also. Right, what we'll probably do, um, and I, I don't think you're going to be exposed to too much, is we'll probably um, offer the band holder maybe a, a 90 day hold period that we wouldn't go back to them. Um, most of them want at least some assurance that they're not going to lend in money on Monday and on Friday and get paid off you know, as they structure their portfolio. They want to have some sense. Um, but a lot of that be driven by who, who the uh, band buyer is. And uh, you've had some local support on other projects uh, from financial institutions. Those are the ones we'll probably talk to first. Um, and I don't want to talk and speak for them or, or commit them to anything. But in previous experiences on other little banks and other projects, they will sometimes waive that. If we up in a 90-day period, it becomes uh, important to try to waive, waive that. Uh, working with somebody local banks that uh, are in the market are sometimes more open to those sort of informal waiving of uh, their rights. So, consensus that everybody <coughs> thinks that we should uh, advise the uh, replacement authority, uh, redevelopment authority, excuse me, uh, that we're in favor of doing the ban I think it's more stylistic issue. I mean, it may make sense to have a motion to recommend to the redevelopment authority what the redevelopment commission recommends, but I don't know that that's necessary either. Member show up and regurgitate what happened here today. So I, you know, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Well, this year, we do get in touch with them for a second. But, mm -hmm. One of the members keeps coming. One of our members is here. He shows up religiously. Okay, let's uh, leave it at that. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, an update from uh, Mark Postkamper on the LOIs on Lincoln Street. No problem with that. Oh, I, I finally read the agenda. So Thank you. Uh, committee met uh, a week ago, Monday. 